Hey guys, my name is Devonte, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. I one of the things about professional wrestling that I really miss the most is just not being around people, not hearing other opinions based off of what's happening backstage. I mean, once you open up that can of worms, there's no going back. Once you squirt that toothpaste out of the toothpaste tube, you ain't putting that toothpaste back in that toothpaste tube. It's over. It's gone. It's out of the it's out of the tube. It's over with. And that's how I feel about professional wrestling nowadays. There's no way I can go back to that mindset, that mentality of professional wrestling is fake. Don't worry about the internet. Go on your school library's computer and check out the wrestling website to see what happened regarding the results of the pay-per-view. All that's dead for me because one, I'm an adult. I can afford certain things that I couldn't afford when I was a kid or even having the advantage to, you know, buy those certain things because I'm of age where I can do that. And more importantly, because I'm an adult, I'm a grown ass man. I know professional wrestling is scripted. You say fake, I kick your ass because it's not fake. Wrestling is not fake. Okay, seeing people break their legs is not fake. Okay, breaking your arms is not fake. Breaking your shoulders and your back is not fake. It's scripted. Get it right. <sighs> but one thing that will always be consistent, whether or not I'm a wrestling fan who was young or a wrestling fan where I was old, is being annoyed by stupid fucking people. That's not just the professional wrestling. That extends to politics. That extends to everyday life. People seeing retarded shit. And most likely, people seeing retarded shit for the sake of coping. The, the, the standard coping mechanism of the wrestling fan. So, if you are living under a rock currently in professional wrestling, which, by the way, I fucking envy the shit out of you. Brian Danielson a couple of days ago, well, I don't know if it was him that exposed it or if it was other people. I know he kind of laid out the groundwork by, you know, throwing out a talkie point saying something along the lines of, hey, you know, we have to make certain decisions. My dad told me if I make certain decisions, I have to do it for the love of the business or whatever and not for the money, some yada yada cheesy shit like that. And essentially, it was a report that went out that talked about Brian Danielson being on a committee of two people. It was him and two lawyers, one who was in-house from AEW and some random motherfucker who just came out of nowhere. And they essentially came to the decision to get rid of CM Punk, right? By the way, I made a video on that. If you want more, you know, information in regards to that, go grow some hair on your balls. It's not too far down the playlist. Go check it out. I don't know why I just pointed down as if you can fucking see me, but that's okay. That's okay. Continuing on though. People are now going, they've been going after Brian for a while now. Now, don't get it mistaken. There are some common sense motherfuckers out of there who are, you know, obviously saying, Tony Khan, we're not buying your bullshit. We obviously know you put Brian up to this. And, hey, I don't believe Brian actually, or Tony Khan had to put Brian up to this. I'm pretty sure Brian told Tony, hey, you know, people love me. They fucking hate you. I was actually on this booking committee that made this decision. How about you let me take the heat off you? I'm pretty sure Brian's that type of guy. I don't see Tony Khan going up to Brian and being like, hey, Brian, I'm on a bench right now. Do me a favor. Do me a solid. I need you to go on Twitter and I need you to take the take the bump off of me i mean take the take the heat off of me i i, I highly fucking doubt tony khan is doing something on the lines of that brian most likely just you know went to him and just hey dude you're taking a lot of shit right now i know people are like clowning on you right now because punk is on survivor series you know let me let me be the guy to take that heat off you i'm pretty sure that was the case of what brian did but the problem with this 
is, as I mentioned before, the knuckle fucks, the knuckle dragging dumb fucks who are going after Brian Danielson for something so innocuous in terms of the whole situation with CM Punk. And I call it innocuous because CM Punk is now currently in WWE. He's happy. I presume the AEW roster, as far as, far as morale is considered, they're happy at the moment. That's why I call it innocuous. No one is having problems within the business. But of course, the actual wrestling fans and themselves have a problem with the fuck was conducted, even though you can see CM Punk in WWE. That's what I mean by the tribalism nonsense. It makes no sense whatsoever. You can watch both products. This isn't a fucking team thing. Whether CM Punk is on WWE or he's on AEW, it doesn't matter. You're still going to see him wrestle and cut promos regardless, right? Maybe I can see your argument and maybe I can see your frustration if Punk was completely off of wrestling. Then I can see your frustration if you're a fan of his. But he's, he's, he's on WWE television. What the fuck is the big deal? Well, leave it up to the AEW fans. It's a huge fucking deal. They're going directly after Brian. They're calling him names. Names. they're calling him a stooge they're calling him a bad friend essentially and you know what i was actually just throwing it out there as just like you know just to touch on because i'm like but i wasn't really necessarily serious per se i mean maybe you could say half serious i don't know I and mean, i can't really remember my mindset when i actually said the talking point but there are people who were saying like you know via twitter and instagram oh brian you were jealous to see on punk and now that he's gone you're gonna take his spot in collision i was just throwing it out there as a talking point i wasn't really serious at least i don't believe i was i mean i have to probably go back and go watch the video to go see my actual emotion to actually put it into context so let me not say that maybe i was serious i don't know i'm a fucking idiot sometimes but no i don't say that now and i don't believe that now but regardless though there were people who were actually saying that and they're literally blaming cm or they're blaming brian danielson for the demise of aew because cm punk is not there and one person actually brought this up and i had to actually go look it up and i got the link down in the description box below one person brought up the fact that brian danielson i mean not the lawyers who were also on the booking committee but again it's not as if i can't see that brian did all this to get the heat off of tony khan because he, he had to expect this was going to be the case for some of these fucking mouth breathers right one of these dumb fucks actually brought up the fact that brian danielson killed the chicago market for aew so let me give a little bit of context to what this ass hat is actually talking about and then i'll give you the real reason as to why and i'm pretty sure most of you guys know why the chicago market is dead via aew and here's a little bit of a fucking hint for some of you dip fucks it's not because of cm punk okay not because of cm punk so check it out this is coming from cage seats uh cage side seats link is on the description box below aew's ticket woes continue ahead of chicago return in november mind you this is a month ago a month almost two months ago honestly because this is october 22nd they're going into chicago the chicago market that was i believe i could be wrong this was like a week prior to survivor series like they went to chicago like about two or three weeks ago right so check this out okay i'm not going to read the entire article because context doesn't really matter it's the tweet that i really care for but if you want to read the entire article it's in the description box below uh it said that there are available tickets so this is my, mind you i think um i can't remember what was their last ticket so oh, you're actually it's right here their last ticket sells uh june 21st in 2023 i guess this would have been what the debut of collision was that the oh no 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 collision was in july right so this was a month prior so mind you this was even without cm punk because because punk didn't come back yet or was this during when did collision um start huh when did collision debut i don't remember when actually let me look that up real quick i'm, cl I'm curious uh aew collision debut what was it um cm punk aew wait it started no it wasn't that um oh june 17th 2023 is when it started so going back june 17th was the start of collision so they went to dynamite that following week okay so i'm assuming the chicago the i'm pretty sure did punk come to dynamite that week i, I wouldn't see why he wouldn't right but regardless they sold 6,291 tickets right that's how much tickets they sold just what a mere five or six months ago and now the uh, available tickets well i guess that would have been four months ago at that time but the available tickets at the start when they actually set it up were 300 well, there were 3240 tickets whereas the current actual setup for the tickets was 5224 that's how much they were actually allotted to actually sell and they actually only sold a little under 2000 tickets so they had 3000 tickets left over 
that's how much they saw going into Chicago and people were painting that out as oh you know because they know this now hindsight and 20 you know hindsight hindsight because they didn't know that you know when Punk was fired that that was Brian Danielson's fault um which by the way can I say this really really quick also yes folks it was Brian Danielson for people who are saying oh you know this is absolutely not Brian you're putting all this on him okay okay let's stop being idiots okay you have you had an outside lawyer and you had an in-house lawyer and Brian was probably put into that position to kind of give you the take of the boys the actual current situation within the locker room I'm pretty sure he took all that information and laid it out for the lawyers to make a decision alongside with him I'm pretty sure if Brian Danielson were to paint out a pretty picture about CM Punk and I'm pretty sure if Brian Danielson were to go out of his way to say hey maybe we should keep CM Punk there's a very 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 high percent chance that they would have kept CM Punk whether it was Tony Khan whether it was the lawyers I just don't understand that talking point people oh you can't put everything on Brian Danielson yes I fucking can because I'm almost certain that if it wasn't for Brian Danielson being the moral arbiter of the whole entire situation considering he's the only one in the locker room to tell you what the fuck is currently going on I, it's just it's just so nonsensical my problem is tony khan made this so-called fucking committee and then put brian Danielson in that position that's my problem with the situation not that oh brian made a decision no brian made the decision i'm sorry he made the fucking decision but regardless though people are saying that it was brian Danielson who made this decision to take out cm punk that put aew in dire straits now see here's the problem with that here's the problem with that they go to the fucking Chicago market like once every fucking blue moon. No, no, I'm sorry. Once every blue moon. I'm giving them way too much credit. They go every fucking quarterly of a moon. Every time there's a new phase of the moon, they end up in fucking Chicago with or without CM Punk. That's their fault. That's their fault. Consistently going to the same market over and over and over and over and over again. And for the most part, giving them the exact same product as to where as to what it was before they even got there. You go to Chicago, go to an AEW event in Chicago back in 2021. Now go to an AEW Chicago event in 2023. Is there really that much of a fucking difference? No, it isn't. Now, granted, obviously, if you're an AEW fanboy, then that's not going to matter to you in the grand scheme things but to some of the families who like to go to wrestling events which by the way that's another problem with AEW they don't have a full grasp on that and if a family sees wrestling they're not going to go unless it's WWE you have to build your brand up to make it more you know not even familiar but um I don't know um I almost want to say flirtatious I don't know if the, I can't think of the right word right now I mean flirtatious will probably be with human beings but you have to make it like appealing there we go you have to make yourself look a, more, a little bit more appealing for wrestlings for families who want to go to these shows because they're not just going for the name value in itself yes the name value means something but they're going for the environment that was cultivated by the wrestling event in itself that's a household name being WWE my point being is though there are a lot of external factors that actually make this a problem that AEW constructed on itself it wasn't Brian Danielson getting rid of CM Punk that killed the Chicago market. It wasn't Brian Danielson that killed the Chicago market, and all of a sudden that now comes throughout the entire AEW product like they want to make it seem like it is. Because essentially what you're saying is the same guy who you're cursing out right now, who went back to WWE, you're essentially saying that if it wasn't for CM Punk, AEW right now would be booming. Like CM Punk should be back and AEW would be booming. Here's a news flash: it wasn't booming when he was there. It wasn't booming when he left. But that, that's despite the point that you should have been doing things now see it's not to say that cm punk at a time in particular in 2021 and early 2022 as far as the tv ratings weren't considered i'll never take that away from him within their scope he did business and when he was doing business you should have grew off that business instead what you intended to do and what you consistently do all the fucking time is to play up to your fan base you play up to your fan base you do the same shit over and over again you don't build stars it was funny i think i seen that from who was that jd from new york this aew cuck you know it's bad when you get fucking losers like jd from new york actually going out of his way to admit the fucking obvious and that's aew has not created stars they haven't they have not i repeat have not created stars if you want to throw mgf in my face understand that mgf and i'm pretty sure you guys know this don't be disingenuous with your stupid ass misinformation mgf has been that character before coming it's an mlw thing not even it's all eight uh mgf i'm saying he used that character to promote himself in mlw 
he, that wasn't AEW. AEW just promoted him, which is good. It's not as if WWE didn't do that with, you know, Randy Savage and Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan back in the 80s. Perfectly fine. I'm not actually saying that's a bad thing. But if you're trying to break up an argument that they actually created superstars, no, they haven't. They haven't. They took stars from the Indies. They took stars from WWE who got released from their contracts. They did exactly what Vince did with the territories back in the 1980s, essentially. The only problem is, is that you didn't grow anybody. And all the stars that you currently have right now at the moment, you have mismanaged so badly. And even and when I say mismanaged, it's not even saying Tony Khan mismanaged. It's that you gave them so much fucking creative control and so much power that they mismanaged themselves. You did not see their best interests at heart. You're like a dumbass parent who says, let my five-year-old run around the house with fucking scissors because it makes them feel authentic about themselves. And then they run and fucking stab themselves in the eye. And then you want to sit back and be like, well... I mean, they have the scissors in their hand, not knowing that you're the fucking parent, not knowing it's a fucking four-year-old with fucking scissors in their goddamn hand. It's all on you, Tony. It's all on you, AEW as a whole. It's all on the product in itself. It's not Daniel Bryan making dumbass decisions like getting rid of CM Punk when he could have just worked that shit out. It's not fucking Tony Khan giving Daniel Bryan that position to make that fucking decision because he's too much of a fucking coward himself to go fucking fire CM Punk face-to-face like a real fucking man. Oh, it's le- legalities in situations like that. Oh, it's me. Was it? Was it okay? Legalities for the fucking idiot AEW marks out there saying, "Well, he had to come up with the committee in order to fire CM Punk just to cover his ass." Did he have to do that with the likes of that fucking? Who's that clown? The one who got in trouble for uh, what was? I don't know if it was domestic. Dis- what was it again? He was there early on in AEW's history back in 2019, maybe 2020. He was in that first match with uh, Darby Allen. Um. I think um, what's the other clown's name? Um, I can't I can't remember the fucking name. Actually, let me look it up real quick too. Uh, what would have been in the first ever um double or nothing show? Double, what's that dumbass name? Because I want to actually get the right to use that as an example. Double or nothing, 2019. What's that guy's name again? Hang on, because the last thing I want to do is get that messed up. Um, um, damn, I can't find it now. I guess he's not. Fuck. I can't find his damn name. Are you serious? Well, he's that much of a fucking nobody that I don't know his goddamn name. Maybe it's Firefest. Oh, man. Is it not Jimmy Rave? Damn it, I hate this, bro. Jimmy Havoc? I think it's Jimmy Havoc his name, right? I think it's Jimmy Havoc. Yeah, this loser, Jimmy Havoc. He's the one I got fired from AEW unceremoniously because some bullshit happened in his personal life. I don't remember. What the hell happened in his personal life? Speaking out allegations? Oh, okay. He was part of the speak out movement. Is that why he got fired? Pretty sure that's why he got fired because of the speak out movement bullshit. Okay, cool. Did you have to put a committee together to get rid of um, this asshole? People go, oh, well, he's not really a fucking name. That's not what I'm asking you. Stop fucking taking talking points, deflecting from the situation. I don't have time for your bullshit red herrings. I asked you a question. Was Jimmy Havoc fired unceremoniously, just like CM Punk was, because of situations that did not have to do with his contract? And when I mean do with his contract, I mean his contract expiring. No? So why didn't you put a committee to get rid of him? Huh? No, you didn't do it because you were batshit fucking afraid, probably. You had no testicles, and you didn't want to confront CM Punk and let him know that he was fired. That that was the situation. That's what you wanted to do. You didn't want to confront CM Punk. You didn't want to confront any of his advocates backstage. You wanted to say, this wasn't my decision. This was the committee's decision. This fucking three-piece committee decision with one wrestler that you put together at the last minute. And also, I learned that Brian Danielson this committee he's still on or whatever finding people are you fucking kidding me right now you have a wrestler finding people how is that not a, I asked this, how is that not a conflict of interest again brian daniels I, I learned that the other day he's actually in a position finding people a guy who can go out there and do the most reckless shit at times is finding wrestlers for doing reckless shit are you fucking kidding me right now what did he find edge when he cursed on television i wonder like, this is fucking retarded this is fucking ridiculous aew no brian Danielson didn't destroy aew tony khan destroyed aew put yourselves into a, a responsible position and actually be fucking adults for a change actually take into consideration what the fuck you actually make your decisions based off of and actually use that and move forward in life and put yourself into a proper position where these kind of decisions and these kind of mistakes don't happen later on in the future but to sit back here and to lambast people fans i'm talking about lambasting superstars based off of decisions right and for tony khan to even 
you know, say to himself, oh, it's okay for Brian Danielson to put out this tweet and get the heat off himself when all you had to do was fire him yourself. And if you would have fired him and had more superstars to be in the wings waiting to take his spot, there's so many ways this could have been avoided. So many ways. More importantly, the easiest way this could have been avoided, if Tony Khan would have just got everybody in the room like a real fucking boss. I don't give a fuck. Oh, he, did, he attempted it. Let's try harder, billionaire boss. You'd have got everybody together. You could have threatened them. You could have did whatever you could have put them into a position where they could have all shook hands, agreed, and made money together. But no. Now you lost CM Punk. Now people are coming after you. Now people are coming after Brian Danielson while still coming after your dumbass because they see through your bullshit, some of them at least. And now your company's cold as fuck and everything is dying around you. You have no one to blame but yourself. Okay? AEW screwed AEW. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Sorry for all the noise if you heard it in the background. Goddamn, that's just so fucking annoying. Goddamn. Let me know your thoughts about the whole CM Punk situation. Let me know your thoughts about Brian Danielson. If you want to continue that conversation, let me know your thoughts on finding out that Brian Danielson is still on the so-called makeshift booking committee, finding people. And let me know how you feel about the dumbass AEW fans still acting nimrodically because they need something to cope with because of tribalistic behavior. As always, my name is Devante, and I'll be catching you fine, Jan Slater. Deuces, P. Eyes.